because I think I can make these two 330 watt panels fit in that area. And because I'm incredibly cheap and thrifty, I did find this Rover MPP charge controller at Goodwill for $7.50, even with the module, which you can see I already tested out. And that might also be why I ordered so many feet. My big panels right here had an open circuit voltage of about 40 volts. So I didn't want to use these with my established system. And these a little bit smaller ones were like 36 volts, so that didn't help out at all either. So I'm going to end up having two solar systems. One, which is 200 watts, it cost me about $200. And then one, which is just under 700 watts, which only cost me $200 because... I got these at an exceptionally good deal for $100 a piece. It's a little built-in redundancy on there. And there still might be room for more solar up there, but I don't want to make it look too bad. It's important to me that I keep the roof sight line on the best RV ever made looking pretty good. Besides, with just under a thousand watts of solar at that point, my next upgrade would probably be to change out from these four AGM six volt batteries to some pretty nice lithium iron phosphate batteries when I get to there. But those are the choices I'm making and why I made those choices. But I am very thankful that the previous owners uh, did keep the uh, owner's manuals. It's even the original owner manual right there inside the RV. Owner's manuals are an incredible, useful tool for a technician and RV owner.